Pushing for the fastest possible kilowatt at the charger might save you 10 minutes, but it can cost hundreds or even thousands of dollars over the life of the battery pack. Today we are dripping open the math and the mechanics behind aggressive fast charge. You'll learn how high kilowatt sessions change the chemistry inside your pack, what the data says about extra degradation, and most importantly, how you can dial down charging power from the car or charger apps so you can keep most of the convenience while cutting long-term repair and replacement risk. I'll show real numbers, real studies, and exact steps you can use tonight on common cars and chargers. Hello everyone, I'm Shayan, an engineer specialized in electric vehicle development. Why the temptation to max out kilowatt is so strong? A 250 kilowatt charger screams convenience. Pop in, watch the number climb, and feel that five minute feel as the battery slurps power. Marketing loves headline kilowatts, but real charging speed is the area under the curve the sustained power over time. And chemical cost of forcing energy into cell fast is real. Semiconductor switching, electrolyte reaction, and temperature spikes all get worse when you hammer the pack with power. That's where the trade-offs start. What the studies actually show? The debate is lively and evolving, but recent data points are clear enough to guide choices. Geotab's larger scale analysis and other studies show that heavy use of high power DC fast charging particularly above 100 kilowatt sessions, correlates with faster capacity loss. Vehicles heavily using more than 100 kilowatt DC fast charging can see average annual degradation rise compared to with mostly AC charged vehicles. One recent Geotab analysis reported roughly 1.5% annual degradation for mostly AC users versus up to 3% per year for a heavy 100, more than 100 kilowatt DCFC users in some datasets. Other datasets are more nouns. Recurrent autos work found smaller differences for some models and argued that fast charging doesn't always translate to worse degradation across every fleet. Results vary by chemistry, thermal management, and usage. That doesn't mean there is no cost. It means the cost is conditional on the battery type and how the vehicle manages heat. Academic and industry modeling also find the same trend. Frequent high power charging accelerates aging mechanism. Things like lithium plating, SCI growth, electrolyte breakdown for many high energy chemistries, especially NMC or NCA cells. One recent paper shows extreme scenarios of very frequent fast charging could change pack replacement economics. In short, there's a real risk and its size depends on chemistry and how often you hit the limit. The mechanics, what breaks and why. When you push high kilowatts into a battery, you're forcing a lot of ions to move quickly that increases the local current density and heat. Two crucial failure modes show up. Lithium plating, at high charge rates and low temperatures, lithium metal can deposit on the anode surface instead of interplating cleanly. Plating permanently reduces capacity and increases internal resistances. Over many cycles, plating scars the anode and shortens the pack. Faster side reactions, higher temperatures, speed, side reactions at electrodes and electrolyte interfaces which consume active lithium and electrolyte, shrinking capacity and increasing impedance. Thermal management buys you protection. Cars with beefy liquid cooling and aggressive preconditioning survive high power with less relative damage. But not every car has equal defenses. Let's do the numbers with a conservative, realistic example. Suppose a 60 kilowatt hour pack loses 2% capacity per year with mostly level two charging. That's about 1.2 kilowatt hour per year lost. If heavy charging, uh, meaning above 100 kilowatt DCFC usage, pushes you to 3% per year instead, that's 1.8 kilowatt hour per year lost. 0.6 kilowatt hour per year extra. Over eight years, that's 4.8 kilowatt hour of a lost usable capacity. If pack replacement or major repair is needed earlier because of cumulative damage, that's where the real dollars appear. Depending on the vehicle and labor, a full pack or major module replacement can run multiple thousand to ten thousands of dollars. Studies and models show worst case economics where repeated very high power charging can materially increase cycle life um, replacement costs for the electric vehicle. Numbers vary by chemistry. LFP or iron phosphate trends to be a more tolerant of high rate cycling than some nickel rich chemistries which means the damage curve for fast charging depends on what's inside your car. That's why brand or model matters. The user's choice, you have two tensions, time and long-term cost. 
People value minutes right now. The question is whether the minutes are worth the dollars later or not. The good news, you don't have to pick extremes. There is a practical middle ground that saves you most of the hassle while keeping your life fluid. Many drivers hit DC fast chargers because it's convenient or necessary. But for daily top-ups, the routine 10 to 20 kilowatt hour for many commuters need. Fast charging is an overkill. Yet lots of people fast charge uh, out of habit or because of fear of range. That's an avoidable cost. Here's the simple strategy you can adopt today that balances time and battery health. Use level 2 AC charging for daily needs. Typical daily commutes energy is like 10 to 20 kilowatt hour and a 7.2 kilowatt uh, level 2 charger supplies 7.2 kilowatt hour per hour. Plenty overnight and uh, far gentler on the battery. That's the cornerstone of the sweet spot. And consumer studies back this. Most lady needs are small and don't require DC fast charging. Reserve DC fast charging for long trips or rare urgent top-ups. When you do fast charge, manage your arrival state of charge and temperature to maximize the high power plateau and minimize the wasted time. And avoid charging time and avoid charging to 100% at DCFC unless needed. Preconditioning before arrival improves both speed and reduces stress on the pack. Double down the maximum charging current when you can. Either in the car HMI, set a lower amp limit or lower percentage state of charge, or in the charger or EVSC application. That small step reduces the pack current and heat generation, flattening the pack and reducing the chemical stress that causes fast aging. How much difference does limiting power make? A rough rule of thumb, cutting peak current roughly in half often reduces lithium plating risk and thermal peaks significantly. Not linearly, but enough to matter. If your average DC session is normally 100 kW, constraining it to 50 to 60 kW can still get most of the necessary energy in a reasonable time while dramatically lowering stress. For a 20 kilowatt hour top up at a 100 kilowatt average, you would need 12 minutes of charging to add 20 kilowatt hour. At 50 kilowatt average, you would need 24 minutes, but the battery aging in induced by the 100 kilowatt run can be materially higher. The 50 kilowatt run is gentler and extends the pack life. For many drivers, 12 extra minutes per occasional top up is worth the thousand save over the long run. Practical steps exactly how customers can reduce charge power. Use the car's app or HMI to set charge limits. Most modern EVs allow you to set a charge percentage limit, like 80%, and in many cases, reducing charging current. Tesla, the app, and the car's charging screen include a charge limit slider. Move it down to set a daily maximum and avoid topping 200% except for trips. Tesla owners can also adjust charging start times to precondition or to align width of peak electricity windows. The owner manual shows how to change these settings. Hyundai and many other OEMs. Vehicles often include EV settings for charging limit and AC charging current. In the in-car menu, that lets you pick a lower AC current if you're home uh, wiring or you prefer gentler charging. Check your EV's EV setting page. Use the EVSD app or charger settings to cap amperage. If your home charger or public EVSC supports it, set a lower maximum amperage directly in the charger app or via the EVSC configuration. Common home chargers like ChargePoint, HomeFlex, Juicebox, or NLX, and etc. let you set the maximum breaker amperage and uh, for many models you can lower current in the app. That restricts the power the car can draw and, and is a safe way to limit charging without filling with the car each time. Charge point and juice net documentation explain how to configure amperage limits and activation. Use a scheduled charging to avoid thermal stress windows. Timing matters. Avoid charging immediately after a hard drive when the pack is hot. And don't fast charge repeatedly without cooling time. Use the scheduled charging features to start charging when the car and the pack are cooler or when the ancillary cooling systems uh, can run prior to charging. Usable portable EVSC or lower rated connection when you need to slow the charger now. If you're at location with only fast chargers and you want to slow the session for longevity reasons, consider using a portable AC charger plugged into a suitable outlet where safe. Slower charging is kinder. Do not use random extension cords or undersized wiring. Safety is first. 
Portable EVSs allow you to choose the amperage by selecting the breaker and EVSC settings. Precondition the battery before a DC fast charge. If your car supports it, preconditioning raises or stabilizes pack temperature before the DC session, letting the battery accept power with less risk of plating. It also reduces wasted time at the charger by increasing the initial uh, plateau. Most cars that support navigation in integrated preconditioning will automatically warm the pack when you set the destination. When you set the destination to a high power charger, use that feature. It reduces both time and stress. A real scenario. Imagine two drivers with the same car and 200 mile trip. Driver A hits every DC fast charger at full blast, 150 kilowatt and above, to shave minutes. Driver B schedules overnight level two fills for the daily miles and for the trip, and for the trip intentionally limits DC sessions to 60 kilowatt except when time is critical. After five years, driver A faces a noticeable higher capacity loss and potentially earlier battery modules working. Driver B's car retains more usable capacity and avoids an expensive repair or loss of resale value. The minutes saved early translate to dollars lost later. This isn't fear mongering, this is practical cost of chemistry. The data from fleet and large sample studies show this pattern often repeats, particularly for packs without extreme thermal defenses. The takeaway pushing kilowatt to the max is a trade off. Faster today, more risk tomorrow. You don't have to sacrifice convenience or longevity. Use level 2 for everyday charging. Reserve DC fast for trips and when you do use DC fast charging. Dial the power back if you can via car HMI app or EVSC settings. Set charge limits around 80% for daily use, precondition when possible, and consider capping DC sessions to a moderate power unless you really need the time savings. These habits preserve capacity, lower the chance of early expensive repairs, and keep your car's value higher over time.